Hello dear students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Surinder Kaur, Professor, Khalsa College of Education, Ranjit Avenue, Amritsar. After studying this topic, you will be able to explain the concept of civil society organizations, elucidate the concept of governance of education, discuss the role of main stakeholders in governance of education, Describe the role of participants in governance of education. Enumerate the role of civil society organizations in governance of education. Let us start with the term civil society. Civil society is the aggregate of non-governmental organizations and institutions that manifest will and interest of the citizens. Civil society includes the family and the private sphere referred as a third sector of the society distinct from government and business. The World Bank interacts with the thousands of civil society organizations throughout the world at global, regional and country levels. These CSOs include NGOs, trade unions, faith-based organizations, native people movements, foundations and many others. CSOs are just like NGOs except that these perform a large number of functions making NGOs a subset of CSOs. CSOs perform an important role in local economic development and poverty elevation. CSOs do many activities like improve the local business investment climate, encourage new enterprises and livelihood programs, deliver social services, train to build capacity. Let us define the civil society organizations. Civil society organizations can be defined to include all non-market and non-state organizations outside of the family in which people organize themselves to pursue shared interest in the public domain. These are the organized civil society groups and can come in many forms, some informal and some as formal entities such as non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, faith-based organizations and many others. This is when a group of individuals come together for a common purpose to fulfill a particular mandate driven by the needs that is it includes community based organizations, village associations, environmental groups, women's right groups, farmers associations, faith based organizations, labor unions, cooperatives, professional associations, chambers of commerce, independent research institutes and not-for-profit media. The definition of civil society as proposed by Salomon 2004 characterizes CSOs with four criteria that is CSOs are private, non-profit distributing, self-governing and voluntary organizations. Now we will discuss this criteria one by one. First of all private, this signifies that they are institutionally separate from the state even if they are receiving consequent amount from the state. Not profit distributing, it means that their purpose is not primarily commercial and they do not distribute profit to specific group that are shareholders or a set of directors. This means that 
if they make any profit, they reinvest it or use it to fulfill their mission. Self-governing, the CSOs are independent from both firms and governments, which means they are having control of their own affairs, voluntary. This means that no one is obliged to join or become member of these organizations. Membership is the result of a free choice, which means that these organizations are at least partially based on voluntary actions. Governance of education, the word governance means the process of decision making and the process by which decisions are implemented or not implemented. Governance can be used in several contexts such as school governance, local governance and corporate governance. School governance involves making decisions on goals, aims and objectives, management approaches, how things should be done, formulation of policies, plans and budgets, accountability and reporting mechanisms, information sharing systems, power relations in the running of the school, allocation, utilization and generation of resources, determination and enforcement of rules, processes and guidelines and stakeholders participation in community learning and teaching resources. Now we will discuss the major characteristics of good governance of education like first of all participation, participation by parents, teachers, community members and pupils is a key foundation of good school governance. Second is rule of law, good school governance requires fair legal framework that is enforced impartiality. It also requires promotion and protection of human rights. Third one is transparency. Transparency means that decisions taken and their enforce enforcement are done in a manner that follows rules and regulations of the school. It also means that information is freely available and directly accessible to those who will be affected by such decisions and their enforcement, for example, parents, teachers, pupils and sponsors. Fourth one is responsiveness. Good school governance requires that school organs and processes try to serve all stakeholders, especially parents, teachers and pupils within a reasonable time framework. Consensus oriented Good school governance requires mediation of the different interests in school to reach a broad consensus. This consensus should be regarding the best interest of the whole school community and the ways it can be achieved. Next one is equity and inclusiveness, ensuring that all members of the school community feel that they have a stake in it and they don't feel excluded from the mainstream. This requires all groups, but particularly the most helpless to have opportunities to improve or maintain their well-being. Next one is effectiveness and efficiency. The concept of efficiency in the context of good school governance also covers the sustainable use of resources and the protection of the environment. Next one is accountability. In general, an organization or an institution is accountable to those who will be affected by its decisions or actions. Participants playing an important role in governance of education. In education, the term stakeholder refers to anyone who is invested in the welfare and success of a school and its students, including administrators, teachers, staff members, students, parents, families, community members, local business leaders, and elected officials, such as 
school board members, city councillors and state representatives. Stakeholders may also be collective entities such as local business organizations, advocacy groups, committees, media outlets and cultural institutions. In addition to these organizations that represent specific groups, there are many other groups such as teacher unions, parent-teacher associations representing supervisors, principals, school boards or teachers in specific academic discipline. In a word, stakeholders have a stake in the school and its students, meaning that they have professional, civic and financial interest. The major participants in governance of education are civil society organizations, community, NGOs, FBOs, trade unions, women organizations, etc. Civil society organizations have a constituency as they have beneficiaries whom they serve. It has been seen that sometimes civil society has no idea what their instruction is. This is because that in spite of well-intended efforts, people don't know or understand the instruction being served by the civil society. The people in fact are guilty of what they often accuse government of doing as they only blame government of imposing plans on people. Many among us don't know what they really want. By virtue of seeking accountability from government and business, civil society organizations should hold themselves to the highest standards and ensure that no error is made about who and what the CSOs represent. Next is community. By building stronger links between school and the community, the benefits of having a school are shared while at the same time, community members feel having more ownership of the school. A joint community school meeting can be held to discuss important issues. This can inspire a discussion how they would like to see the school to serve the local community. It will help them to feel having ownership of the school and will extend their own learning processes. Next is NGOs, community-based organization and civil society institutions are the main stakeholders of school governance and play an important role in quality management. Community-based organizations are non-profit groups that work at the local level to improve life for residents. The focus is to build equality across the society in all streams like healthcare, environment, quality of education, access to technology, access to spaces and information for the disabled. The people of these organizations have wide ranging advantages to the community in specific and society in general. Once the people are organized, they can be made actively aware of their rights, contributions and responsibilities and so on. Role of civil society organizations in governance of education. For over two decades now, the process of globalization has been influencing the socio-economic environment of countries. While globalization provides new opportunities for economic development to countries through trade, liberalization, foreign direct investment, capital flows, information exchange and technological transfer. It has meant increased deprivation for those nations who have been unable to adjust to the new requirements of global society. Thus, on one hand, while we witness rapid economic growth and prosperity in some regions, 
there are more than a billion people who continue to live in poverty without purchasing power of less than a dollar in a day. In the poorest countries, about one fifth of the children die in the first year of their birth. Nearly half of those who survive are malnourished and a significant proportion of the population does not have access to clear water, sanitation, basic health services and education. The harsh realities of increasing global inequalities had been a major concern to the international community over the years. But the new century opened with an extraordinary declaration of solidarity and determination to rid the world of poverty. The Millennium Declaration adopted at the largest ever gathering of heads of state in September 2000 commits that there is need that all countries rich and poor should do all they can do to eradicate poverty, promote human dignity and equality and achieve peace, democracy and environment sustainability. World leaders promise to work together to meet the Millennium Development Goals with specific targets including that of reducing poverty to half by 2015. However, four years after the declaration, progress is partial. Some regions like Asia and the Pacific and some countries like China may generally be on track, but others are not. It seems that on current trends, most countries will not reach many MDG targets. Achieving MDGs require a shift in the development paradigm with three things. First of all, new focused and rational approaches which highlight the MDGs. Second, sustained commitment and enhanced political will on the part of world leaders. And third, new development partnerships based on shared responsibilities among major stakeholders. It requires many combined and complementary efforts by international agencies, national governments, local authorities, private sector and civil society organizations. Civil society has to make a larger contribution both directly and indirectly to the process of poverty reduction and attainment of other MDG targets. Now we will talk about different sectors of civil society organization. In fact, one significant area of progress over the past decade has been the growing influence of local, national and global CSOs, non-governmental organizations, community organizations, professional associations and other civil society groups are regularly called on to help design and implement poverty reduction approaches. Their participation is also built into special initiatives like the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. These new approaches reflect the three roles of civil society. One is as participants in the design of plan. Second, as service providers through community organizations and national NGOs. And as a watchdog to ensure that government fulfills its commitments. Here one thing remarkable is that by insisting on a transparent process for the development of national policies to achieve the MDGs, bilateral and multilateral institutions can help the civil society to gain a stronger foothold in policy making and implementation. Education takes place not only in schools but also within families, communities and society. 
despite the various degree of responsibilities taken by each group none can be the sole agent to take 100% responsibility for educating children parents and families cannot be the only group of people for children's education as long as their children interact with and learn from the world outside their families communities and society must support parents and families in the upbringing socializing and educating of their children schools are institutions that can prepare children to contribute to the betterment of the society in which they operate by equipping them with the skills important in society schools cannot and should not operate as a separate entities within the society role of civil society organizations in participatory and accountable governance civil society is a sphere of social interaction between household and the state which is manifested in the norms of community cooperative formation of voluntary association and network of public communication these follow norms like value of trust exchange tolerance and inclusion these believes in cooperation and community problem solving formation of association refers to the full range of informal and formal organizations through which citizens pursue common interest civil society is composed of autonomous associations which develop a dense diverse and pluralistic network civil society is comprised of a range of local groups and specialized organizations it provides linkage between them to amplify the corrective voices of civil society and includes civil society as a partner in governance and the market specifically cos both local and international can potentially contribute to local economic development and respond to the growing prob problem of poverty in a number of ways their responses can be categorized like this improve the local business investment climate encourage new enterprise and livelihood program deliver social services provide training and capacity building programs now we will discuss role and activities of civil society organization first activity is to improve the local business investment climate it can be improved through economic organization there should be formation of improved policies for business and good governance second is investment promotion and marketing housing development program needs special attention encourage and expand alternative source of energy advocate for improved legislative and financial policies advocate for reduction of corruption and inefficiency improve information flow and networking for increased accountability intimate crime prevention measures improve flow information to improve awareness encourage new enterprises and livelihood programs like income gathering projects and microfinance projects give credit and loans to feasible projects and small business individually or collectively provide advice on finance business planning marketing law etc deliver social services first of all education to improve education conduct literacy programs provide increased business focused education second is to improve social welfare 
and other social sector implement health programs, organize occupational health standards, implement programs and projects for child labor, child care, etc. Create women access employment and self-employment programs, implement and support AIDS, family planning, vaccination, etc. Integrate low income and hard to employ workers. Arrange skill retaining and job placement programs, particularly for minorities and other marginalized groups. Next is training and capacity building. Provide training for building entrepreneurs. Provide specific skills training for vocational and technical persons. Provide workshops and seminars for institutional capacity building upcoming at grassroots. Next is relief and rehabilitation. Provide emergency services such as temporary shelter, food, etc. after disaster or conflict. Enhance community preparedness for natural calamities and other disasters. Deliver social safety nets to the needy. Next is delivery of social services, efforts to sustain economic development and reduce poverty are unlikely to succeed in the long run unless there is a greater investment in human capital, particularly of the poor. Ample evidence exists that improvements in education, health and nutrition not only directly attack some of the most important causes of poverty, but also ensure sustained supply of productive labor, which is an important factor of production and contributor to economic growth. The link between education and productivity is well established. The principal asset of the poor is labor time. Education and training leads to a higher income at the individual level and a higher growth at the macro level. A study of small and medium sized enterprises in Colombia has shown that business persons backgrounds, skilled education and previous experience strongly influences both technical efficiency and the profitability of the enterprise. So providing training through business, vocational or technical training and workshops for upcoming business is therefore of the core importance. CSOs due to their flexible and need responsive nature of their activities can play an important role in the provision of such social services in very innovative ways. CSOs and Global Partnership for Education, civil society organizations collaboration with the global partnership is essential to keep education a high priority on the development agenda. Civil society organizations help shape education policies and monitor programs and hold government accountable for their duty to fulfill the right to education. CSOs can be small or large, national or international, and these include parents, associations, children and youth organizations and teacher unions. The global partnership works with organized CSOs networks such as the Global Campaign for Education and Education International, which help and facilitate collaboration among organizations and support national and global linkages. CSOs actively participate in global partnership governance with the three of the 19 seats on the board of directors reserved for their constituency. Now we will talk about the role of CSOs in global partnership in education. CSOs help to develop 
implement and monitor education approaches in partner developing countries. They assess progress towards education resulted by monitoring the allocation, disbursement and use of funds from donors, GPE fund and the help from national government. The global partnership supports CSOs to be active members of their national local education group where they make meaningful contributions to policy discussions and education sector planning. In donor countries, CSOs advocate for adequate support through official development assistance to ensure that developing countries have the resources needed to provide quality education for all children. Working alongside GPE at global level, CSOs mobilize political will to support equitable quality education for all in the international development and financing agendas. GPE's support to CSOs in an effort to enhance the role of CSOs partners in the global partnerships global governance and in a national education policy processes. The global partnership provides funding to CSOs by many ways. First of all, the Civil Society Education Fund. Since 2009, the GPE board has allocated more than $32 million to the Civil Society Education Fund. GPE will support 62 national networks around the world through an additional $29 million for 2016 to 2018. This support will lead to better informed national policy dialogue and reinforced government accountability to citizens for the achievement of equitable, inclusive, and quality public education. Global and regional activities programs. In 2014, the global partnership approved $1.9 million in funding through the global and regional activities program for teacher support and participation in local education groups. Youth assignments, the global partnership for education assign the youth to advocate and support a strong youth voice within the GPE's civil society constituency. CSOs and social mobilization. As CSOs, a person can support education for all children by involving with local education partnerships and learn more about CSEF funded activities through the global campaign for education. Staying informed about the global education discussion through blog, Facebook and Twitter accounts. Involving with his constituency through GPE board representatives. At the end, we can say that CSOs spread benefits of globalization more equitably across nations and regions to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. All development partners need to play their due role. This demonstrates that the civil society sector is instrumental in promoting local economic development, elevating poverty, advocating policy change, contributing to good governance and campaigning for the Millennium Declaration. Their contribution, however, needs to be supported. Critical engagement on the Millennium Development Goals can increasingly become the approach for many CSOs extending, updating and localizing the goals as appropriate to their own situation. The Millennium Declaration 
and the local civil society movements can support and reinforce each other both at the local and national level. From the recent studies, it has been concluded that worldwide primary activity of CSOs is to improve in the standards of education which simultaneously help us to achieve our millennium development goals of universal primary education. CSO's indulgence is in education and women empowerment is 20%. To emphasize the awareness among masses regarding CSO's needs to be highlighted so that more and more people could join hands with these organizations and achieve Millennium Development Goals and other predetermined objectives. Thank you.